We are on lesson four. It's entitled Reaching for the Stars. Here was where you set and master your goals with the correct frame of mind and grit and effort as the companion. We can finally turn our dreams into a reality. This is the action plan where you can finally plan out the way you're going to live your life. I think about when I take a family vacation and we pile into the car before I even leave the driveway. I sit there and I enter into my GPS, my destination where I'm going. And the GPS does this magical, wonderful thing. It plans out my entire route and tells me exactly down to the hours and minutes of when I'm going to arrive. If we're going from Tennessee to Florida, it tells me when we're going to get there, what routes to take, what turns to make you know, to get to our hotel. It tells us if the obstructions are ahead, it gives us warnings. If we do alternate routes, it takes us that way, but it makes sure we get there. So our goal was our destination and the GPS route was the plan on how to get there. With College Journey, it's basically the same thing. When setting your college goals, you need that end in mind, where you're going, where your destination is, and then the plan, the route on how to get where you want to go. You got to know the route. However, many students haven't really thought about that. They don't know where they're going. They haven't thought about the destination or how to get there. Now, why would you do that? Because that would be like getting in my car and just driving around aimlessly, not knowing where I'm heading. If you don't know where you are going, you'll end up someplace else. So we got to make sure we know where we're going. In setting goals, the first thing you have to do is know what you want to achieve and then be committed to do it. So it's our GPS route. We've got types of goals that we're gonna talk about. Those are long-term goals, short-term goals, and those goals will be SMART goals. If you ask business leaders, successful business, they always say they have in their companies, and one reason they're successful is they set goals. It's just something they do. Their business has a goal. Their person, personal life, they have goals. You know, you shouldn't be any different than that. But it does require many mental effort, some thinking about it, some contemplating, some praying about it, soul searching. You got to figure that out. And one thing I found out that a lot of these moms of preschoolers that love to plan, you know, how to redecorate their living room, for example, you know, change up their home. They like to do that. And that's understandable. There's nothing wrong with that because they want it to be nice for their family. I get that. But they would spend, I noticed, a lot of time looking through magazines, looking on the internet, you know, websites, getting ideas, Pinterest, wherever, you know, how to decorate, how to manage just like a room in their house, like a living room, or picking out a couch, and then going to all these different stores, finding a different couch that would fit their needs. And But when I asked them where they were going to send their preschooler, what kind of academic opportunities they were going to give them, or whether they were going to do programs with them, or work with them at home, what kind of plan they had, they'd look at me and go, I, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Well, I guess I'll send them to the program that's closest to my home. And they re really never investigated or researched any of these different academic issues or learning styles for preschoolers or any of that. And there's something that seems to be fundamentally wrong with that. They could spend hours, I mean days, weeks, months on a room in their house to make it look pretty, which is fine, but maybe a little frivolous. But here when they're talking the foundation foundation of their child's basic but fundamental and most important step, they really hadn't thought about it. When I started teaching moms this, and it was kind of an awakening moment for them. So in goal setting, you got to have that effective pathway, but first you have to have that end destination. You've got to know where you're going first where you're heading so then you can plan that effective pathway to get there and that's what turns our dreams into a reality that actionable plan what you're going to do and granted everyone wastes some time they're time wasters we do that but the real problem is when we're doing this action plan when our time wasters interfere with our route so we need to figure out what our big time wasters are and then drop them like a hot potato get rid of them get them out of your life if they're not helping you at all first thing is long-term goals we start there because again 
that is where you're heading. It's like looking through binoculars, looking way down the road. Where are you going? When we say long-term goals, this can be two to four years down the road, even after college graduation. You do need to set long-term goals. The reason you do this, it gives you a long-term vision. It keeps you going through the process of that rigor to meet those long-term goals. You don't want to lose sight of that vision. Having those goals is not sufficient enough because you have to have the knowledge, desire to keep that motivation going so that you don't give up and you don't quit. Short-term goals is just as important, say just evenly important, with the long-term goals. They help maintain that focus. They zero in the action parts, the action plan to get to those long-term goals, to get to the end. If you didn't have these short-term goals, it'd be easier to quit because <clears throat> you never see progress. So you must develop short-term goals and they are set to be achieved usually six weeks, six months. They can even go up to a year depending on that long-term goal, what it is. They need to be SMART. Now SMART is just an acronym that stands for these words. So SMART, we have specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Goal should be clear, it should be concise, it should be well-defined. When we're talking about specific goals, you may have heard every you know New Year's holiday, you hear these resolutions, these goals, well, I'm gonna lose weight this year. Well, that's not very specific, and that's why most times they fail. Or I'm gonna learn a new sport. It's not very specific. When we say specific, it needs to answer the W questions, who, what, where, when, why. If you were going to say, I want to lose weight, that is not specific. However, change it to say, I want to lose 10 pounds in six weeks. That is better. It's more precise. I want to run the county health marathon in May. That's more specific. It must be measurable. Measurable goals enable you to track your progress along the way. You can measure it. It answers the questions how much or how many, sometimes it actually answers yes or no, depending on, on what it says. If your goal is I'm gonna run three times a week for six weeks, you can measure that. Did I run three times this week? That's a yes or no. So it's gotta be able, you gotta answer that. You gotta be able to measure it. At the end of the six weeks, can you look back and say, you know, how much did I run? Did I run my three times a week every week for six weeks? Or if the goal was to lose 15 pounds in six weeks, you can, that could be measured. You can step on a scale. Look at the numbers. What's your weight, right? So you can answer that question. In SMART, the A is attainable. This can also be, let me give you another word as well. It can be actionable. So the A can stay, stand for attainable or actionable. Now goals should be realistic. Now it'd be nice to find a million dollars, but that's not realistic. So whatever goal you have, you've got to be able to be able to attain it, to reach it. When you answer your questions like, well, how can I accomplish this goal? How can I get there? It's got to be something that you can do. Now they are meant to challenge you. Goals are meant to challenge you, but you can do it. Sometimes it's saying, do I have to get resources? Do I have to attain resources to help me get this goal accomplished? When you answer questions like, how can I accomplish the goal? You figure out how you can reach it. If you want to run every day or three days a week, whatever it is, or am I physically able to do that much exercise? Do I need to seek out a resource like a doctor, a health practitioner, a nutritionist to make sure that I can do that physical exercise? Can I really block off 30 minutes a day to exercise? You look at your time management, look at your schedule, make sure this is a goal that you can do and you can reach, it's reasonable. Maybe the doctor has to give you that green light before you can, can do it. And stay away from personal attributes like I need to have a better attitude that really can't be measured so specifically. The next thing that in your SMART goal, the R stands for relevant, it must be relevant to you. Now what that means is does this goal mean enough to you? Do, do you value it? Is it worth it? Do you really want it? Do you have that desire? If it's very important to you, you're more apt to stay the course and do the steps to get to your goal. 
It's got to be important to you. Going back to that running the marathon example, maybe that's a, a lifetime goal. I want to run that marathon by the time I'm age whatever. And so it's that desire that inside that you want to do that. So it's worthwhile to put forth all the exercise to do that. If it's not worthwhile to you, you will not be likely to reach your goal. The T in SMART means time based or has to be done in a timely manner. There is a target date, there's a finish line, there's a deadline that you need to put in that goal. And I'm talking both short term and long term goals. There is a finale date and you have to insert that when you write your goals. It's important to have that, that deadline or that target date because it keeps lower priority tasks lower. So it's got to have that target date because you're like, I've got to reach this goal. Make sure it matches up with the time it takes to accomplish the goal. For example, if you were doing a long-term academic goal, I, when I want to graduate on such and such a date four years from now, I want to have a teaching job within six months after my graduation date, which is what? And that's a long-term, a time-based goal, knowing that that's how much time it's going to take to do that. If I'm going to run that marathon, you'd put that date of the marathon, back it up, you know, six weeks before it, and so I'm going to run every day for six weeks until I enter that marathon on such or such date. So you, would, you de definitely need to put your dates in there for both short term and long term. And you need to have, by the way, enough time to be able to accomplish the goal, but not too much time where you're losing your momentum. So be smart about your SMART goals. When we say self-manage your journey, it is up to you. There's no tools, no classes that you need to do this. It's your creating goals for your life and it's your, in your, your route. Once you identify your goals, and we're talking both long-term and short-term, you need to make it visual. Write it down. Yes, write it down. Post it where you can see it every day. It's just a constant reminder. Then you got to take action. You can't just write it and be done with it. It takes, it takes a little work. It takes some action, some movement toward that goal. There comes your grit and your effort. You know what you want. Now go get it. And along the way, you must evaluate your progress. How are you doing? Are you mastering those short-term goals? Are you sticking to the core, sticking to the action plan? Now, I know life happens, and things in families or emergency situations happen. That is life. If something happens that you had no control of, then of course, look at it again and modify it if necessary. Now don't lower your standards. Just keep your standards high, keep them up there, but you may need to add some time and continue on forward progress. So you need to learn to be smart about your SMART goals. Quick summary, you have to identify, you gotta know where you're going way down the road, your destination, those are your long-term goals. And then the little stops along the way to get there, the turns, the correct turns, so to speak, to help reach those long-term goals. Each goal, every single one needs to be a SMART goal. So you need to remember that acronym. Write goals down where you can see them daily and revisit your goals consistently. Why? Monitor your progress. How are you doing? It's just a reflection and evaluation of yourself. And then adjust it, modify it as necessary. And what we're going to do, I want you to grab a pencil and a paper and we're going to write down academic long-term goals and short-term goals to meet them. Without dreams and goals, there is no living, only merely existing. And that is not why we are here. So what we're gonna do, when you think upon and think about our destination, where you're going, and we're gonna jot down a long-term academic goal. One long-term, we're talking two to four years down the road. We're just gonna get it down on paper, we don't want to skip this step. We can go back and change it if we need to, revisit it. Our important thing here is to make it smart. So let's do that right now. 